Thank you so much for being here. And can you tell me your name? Jenny Thompson. What happened when you were a little girl that made you think about your weight at such a young age? When did you first start thinking about it? In first grade, when I was like five, I was skinny as a rail. I was, I look at the pictures now, I can't even believe it. Um, and then I skipped a grade and kids can be mean. So the kids in first grade didn't want to be friends with me. The kids in second grade didn't want to be friends with me. Um, and I would come home every day and my mom would feed me to make me feel better. She would give me ice cream and cookies. And so now when I look back at the class pictures in first grade, I was skinny as a rail. And in third grade, I had rolls of fat. It's probably like a 20 or 30 pound difference at age eight. So my parents, <laughs> my parents actually uh, sent me to fat camp when I was 11 or 12 years old. I went for the summer and I lost weight and I came home and I ate it all back on. Like it was really, I struggled my whole life with it. I remember my, my ex-husband um, was very big. He was six foot four, 250 pounds. And we would get a pizza and I would immediately take like my half of the pizza to make sure I got the pieces I wanted. It never occurred to me to just eat a piece, see if I was still hungry. So I would cut a pizza in half. Mm -hmm. And here's a guy who's like double my size and I'm letting him have the same amount of pizzas as, as I would eat. It wasn't just one day, it happened more than once, but I would go to the Burger King drive-thru and I would order two meals, but I didn't want them to think I was such a pig that I would eat all this food. So I would order two drinks, because I thought if I ordered two drinks, they would think that the second meal was for somebody else. And then I would actually drive to a parking lot about a block away, I would throw out one of the drinks and I would just eat both meals and do all of that without my husband knowing. I was, def I was a closet eater. I would drive around and buy food at different places. At one night I went to, I think, three different 7-Elevens because I wanted like a king cone and an ice cream sandwich and a chip witch and I didn't want the same clerk to know I was gonna eat all three. Food ran my life. And so what transformed and, and how did you make the changes? I woke up the year I was gonna turn 40 and it was early in January. It wasn't January 1st, I remember, because it was past like New Year's resolution times. And I just thought, if I don't do this now, I'm gonna be fat every minute for the rest of my life. When I think about how much of my life I wasn't living because of the things I wouldn't try, I was in, because I was embarrassed how I would look or if I weighed too much to do them. And I mean, I thought I couldn't go horseback riding because I would hurt a horse's back. Tell me a little bit more about your rules. One of my rules was I threw out leftovers immediately. If you've ever, if you've ever been an overeater, you know, even if you bring something home, it sits in the fridge and two hours later it says, Jenny, <laughs> I'm still here. Um, and you get out of bed and you end up eating Chinese food at 11 o'clock at night, which is probably the single worst thing you could ever do if you don't want to be fat. Um, so my rule was I would throw it out or I would put it in the freezer as soon as I got home. So it couldn't be ready in two hours. And people would say to me, you're wasting a lot of food. And I was okay with that. My thought was, the, the option here is me eating food that my body doesn't need and doesn't want and turns into fat or throwing it out. And so my response actually, I started donating money to Feeding America every mm -hmm. time I would throw out a meal. So I thought for the people who were judging me for wasting food, I'm actually feeding hungry people as a reward for myself for not feeling like I have to eat the food on my plate. That is incredible. One of my philosophies for myself was I, knew that I could always get more food. So I didn't need to tank up for later. And I think that was a mentality I always had, like, what if I get caught in a traffic jam and there won't be any food? And I recognized I was never somebody who was going to be in a food desert. It sounds like your father had some disapproval. And how did that feel for you? Um, it, was, it was actually a, a crippling thing for me growing up. Mm -hmm. And my dad was always, just very tough. It was a tough relationship. Um, he loved sports cars and he used to have a, like a little Datsun 260Z. So there were, there was only two doors and we'd have to climb out. And I remember I was probably seven or eight years old and I was having trouble getting out of the car. And he said to me, you did that with all the grace of a wounded cow. He was never supportive of me in that way. I will say when I lost the weight, one day he just looked at me and he said, Jenny, you look amazing. I think it was very important to me that I accomplished it on my own, my way, and he still saw that happen instead of it being somebody forcing me to do it or shipping me away somewhere that they were going to restrict my food until I lost weight. It was, 
um, it was very tough knowing that something that was a significant part of me, my father did not love or approve of. And you know, it's interesting, I was, I was talking to a friend the other day, and he was telling me a story about somebody who, who works in the weight loss industry and says to their clients, I love you and I will love you exactly the same, whether you're fat or thin. And I said to him, that isn't true. Because when you're thin, you feel happier. You feel less ashamed of yourself. You feel less angry. And I don't mean to body shame anybody, but I've been there. And loving who you are at any moment is great. But when you feel better about yourself and you feel more attractive and you can go into every store and not just Lane Bryant, mm -hmm. and you don't have to find the, the encore section at Nordstrom and you can wear colors instead of zebra prints, you feel happier and you are more lovable. So it's not that somebody should love you better because you're thin, it's you will feel better about yourself and that makes you easier to love and easier to connect with. And I know that's what happened with me. Jenny, thank you so much for sharing your story. It's, it's, it's moving and it certainly touched my heart in so many different ways and, and I'm sure everyone that's listening and watching your story. Thank you for inviting me. I feel like if one person wakes up tomorrow and says, today's the day I decided to get thin, this will have been the best use of my time ever. Thank you so much.